Good morning, everyone. Thank you for being with us today. We're really glad you're here. We pray our service will be a blessing to you. It is the first day of our new Christian church here, the first Sunday in the season of Advent. The word Advent comes from a Latin word meaning coming, and we're thinking, of course, looking ahead to Christmas when we celebrate the coming of our Savior into this world so we can have eternal life. But whenever we think of Jesus coming, still in the back of our minds, we're always looking ahead, knowing that he is coming again to take us to be with him. We light the first candle on our Advent wreath today. It's the prophecy candle. In the Old Testament, the Lord gave prophecies, pointing people or reminding people that his son was coming into the world. And of course, when Jesus came, he fulfilled those prophecies as he accomplished our salvation. And in our service today, we're going to look at blessings that we can pray for for all of God's people, including ourselves. So we'll begin with the singing of the first hymn. Please rise. On this first Sunday in Advent, we follow the order of service as it begins on page 45 in your hymnals. It is morning praise. The service is also projected on the wall. O Lord, open my lips. My mouth shall declare your praise. Hasten to save me, O God. Lord, come quickly to help me. Behold, the King comes, let us worship him. We sing him 21.
You may be seated. We join together in reading Psalm 25 responsively. Psalm 25 is found on page 74, also again projected. We'll read the psalm responsively. We'll sing the refrain. We'll all join together in reading the glory be to the Father. To you, Lord, I lift my soul, in you I trust my God. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul, in you I trust, O my God. Remember, O Lord, your great mercy and love. Remember not the sins of my youth and my rebellious ways. To you, O Lord, I lift my soul. In you I trust my God. Turn to me and be gracious to me. Look upon my affliction and my distress. Guard my life and rescue me. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. To you, O Lord, I lift my soul, in you I trust my God. Our scripture lesson for this first Sunday in Advent, we find in the Gospel of Luke, reading in the first chapter, beginning at verse 5. In the time of Herod, king of Judea, there was a priest named Zechariah who belonged to the priestly division of Abijah. His wife, Elizabeth, was also a descendant of Aaron. Both of them were upright in the sight of God, observing all the Lord's commandments and regulations blamelessly. But they had no children because Elizabeth was barren, and they were both well along in years. Once, when Zechariah's division was on duty and he was serving as priest before God, he was chosen by lot, according to the custom of the priesthood, to go into the temple of the Lord and burn incense. And when the time for the burning of incense came, all the assembled worshipers were praying outside. Then an angel of the Lord appeared to him, standing at the right side of the altar of incense. When Zechariah saw him, he was startled and was gripped with fear. But the angel said to him, Do not be afraid, Zechariah. Your prayer has been heard. Your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son, and you are to give him the name John. He will be a joy and delight to you, and many will rejoice because of his birth. For he will be great in the sight of the Lord. He is never to take wine or other fermented drink. And he will be filled with the Holy Spirit even from birth. Many of the people of Israel will he bring back to the Lord their God. And he will go on before the Lord in the spirit and power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the fathers to their children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the righteous to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. Zechariah asked the angel, How can I be sure of this? I am an old man, and my wife is well along in years. The angel answered, I am Gabriel. I stand in the presence of God, and I have been sent to speak to you and to tell you this good news. 
And now you will be silent and not able to speak until the day this happens, because you did not believe my words, which will come true at their proper time. Meanwhile, the people were waiting for Zechariah and wondering why he stayed so long in the temple. When he came out, he could not speak to them. They realized he had seen a vision in the temple, for he kept making signs to them, but remained unable to speak. When his time of service was completed, he returned home. After this, his wife Elizabeth became pregnant and for five months remained in seclusion. The Lord has done this for me, she said. In these days he has shown his favor and taken away my disgrace among the people. Here ends our scripture lesson for today, God's word. The Lord will come again in glory. The spirit and the church cry out, Come, Lord Jesus, come. We continue our service with the singing of hymn 26. rise. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Amen. The words of God will consider on this the first Sunday in the season of Advent are written in the third chapter of Paul's first letter to the Thessalonians. We start with verse 9 and he says, How can we thank God enough for you in return for all the joy we have in the presence of our God because of you? Night and day we pray most earnestly that we may see you again and supply what is lacking in your faith. Now may our God and Father himself and our Lord Jesus Christ clear the way for us to come to you. May the Lord make your love increase and overflow for each other and for everyone else, just as ours does for you. May he strengthen your hearts so that you will be blameless and holy in the presence of our God, of our God and Father, when our Lord Jesus comes with all his holy ones. This is God's word. Please be seated. In the name of our gracious God, who gives us the greatest blessings of all through his son Jesus, dear members of God's family. It's actually a simple way to do evangelism. I would bet every family here does it. And you probably don't even realize that you're doing it. But 
It's sending Christmas cards. And、uh, every year, you have to go through the process. Let's see who sent us one last year. Who should we send one to this year? And then, of course, choosing what cards to send. And there's some awfully good ones.、Uh, these are just a sampling, but a picture of a manger with a baby in it. For unto us a child is born. Or Noel, Noel, born is the King of Israel. This one has the name of Jesus and other names. Wonderful Counselor, the Bread of Life, Alpha and Omega, and then this one has a verse in the front from the Old King James. But in this was manifested, in this was manifested the love of God toward us, because that God sent His only begotten Son into the world, that we might live through Him. Here in His love, not that we loved God, but that He loved us. And sent his son to be the propitiation, that is, the atoning sacrifice, for our sins. Without realizing it, you send cards like those. Whoever gets them, even if they just glance at them, they receive a reminder of what Christmas is all about: God sending His Son to be our Savior. Now, many times when you send or maybe receive a Christmas card, inside there's a little letter. People will highlight what's What's happened to their family for the past year, and then maybe inside the card there's also notes, or maybe they write notes in them. Things like、uh, "May the Lord bless you during this、uh, Christmas season," or "God's blessings to you and your family." Sometimes a little note: "Hope all is well with you."、Uh, look forward to seeing you maybe in the new year, or one like this, perhaps. Wishing the best for you and your family. During this Christmas season, and a nice thought that we're wishing the best. We want the best blessings to be there for you and for your family. Well, in these words of God before us, we see the Apostle Paul writing to his family in Christ, and actually, he's wishing that they would be blessed in an extra special way. And as we look at these words, I can think. I think we can see blessings that we also would hope for, wish, pray for, for all believers, for all who are part of Christ's family. So let's use that thought as our theme as we look at these words before us, keeping in mind that we are going to be wishing the best for our family in Christ. And three things in particular we can note as we look at these words: one, that it's That、uh, our faith would increase and be strengthened. Two, that our love would increase. And then finally, that we will be blameless when Jesus comes again. Now, the Lord led the led the apostle Paul to the city of Thessalonica during his second missionary journey, and he blessed the preaching of that word in that city, so that any number of people were brought to faith, and they established a new Christian congregation there. Now, unfortunately, it wasn't long before the Jews started causing trouble, and Paul had to leave the city. But even though he left, he still cared very much about them. In fact, he was filled with joy because of them. In fact, a little bit earlier in the letter, he talks about the, the Thessalonian Christians, and he says, "Our gospel came to you not simply with words, but also with power, with the Holy Spirit, and deep conviction." Conviction. They believed what Paul was preaching to them. In spite of severe suffering, you welcomed the message with the joy given by the Holy Spirit, and so you became a model to all the believers in Macedonia and Achaia. So the example that they said is something that pleased him. The Lord's message rang out from you not only in Macedonia and Achaia. Your faith in God has become known everywhere. There's no wonder. With those things in mind, that he says, how can we thank God enough for you, in return for all the joy we have in the presence of our God, because of you? Paul was was thankful for them, filled with joy because of them, because they had faith and because they were living that faith. And as he thinks of them, he has some special wishes for them as well. He says, night and day we pray most earnestly. That we may see you again and supply what is lacking in your faith. 
And as we said earlier, Paul couldn't stay that long, probably not even a month, and he had to leave. And obviously he was able to teach them some things, and they came to saving faith, but there's so much more he would like to, to tell them about. Uh, in this letter, of course, he can give them some instruction, and he talks to them about Christian living, uh, being ready for Jesus coming, what will happen when Jesus comes again. But he'd still like to be with them face to face to be able to talk to them, uh, to give whatever is lacking in their faith. And again, uh, a, a good thing for us to keep in mind for, for our family in Christ, for all believers, that we would always be able to encourage each other and give them whatever might be lacking in their faith, to build them up in their faith. And we do that, of course, as we continue to teach people God's Word. We do that even as we focus again and again on, on the basics, the two most, most important teachings that we need to be clear about the law and the gospel, right? The law telling us we're not perfect people. We're sinful. In fact, we were sinful the instant our lives started. We've done things that are wrong. All of us have. And because of our sins, we deserve God's punishment. And there's nothing we can do to make up for our sins. There's nothing we can do to gain God's favor. There's nothing we can do to keep ourselves out of hell. Now, the temptation is there to, to think, well, I know all that already, and uh, why do you keep bringing it up? In fact, I go to church, and you, you make me feel bad by reminding me of my sins and telling me what a terrible sinner that I am. Why do you keep making me feel bad? And the goal is not to make you feel bad or keep you feeling bad. The goal is to just make sure that you're always clear about those teachings so that we don't trust in ourselves and our good works. To be clear about that so we realize we do need God's help, the help that he alone can give, the help that he has given then through Jesus. And then we make the main focus on that. Look at how much God loves you. What a wonderful God he is that even though we have fallen into sins, he still loves us. And he loves us so much that he sent his son for us. And look at what Jesus did for you, how much he loves you, that he was willing to suffer all those things to take care of your sins. And how wonderful it is to know all is forgiven, that we are right with God through Jesus, that you are his dear children. And that's the goal. And yes, we talk about the law sometimes, and sometimes it hurts, sometimes it makes us feel bad. But always leading then to the good news with the goal that when you walk out, that as you live your life, you're glad, happy. I am so happy that I am God's forgiven child. I am so happy that God loves me. I am so happy that God is with me always, that he is guiding me and blessing me and working all things for my good. That's the goal, that you have those wonderful blessings. And so we go back to law and gospel continually to make sure we're always clear about these things, to make sure that we always have that joy that comes from knowing God's love and what he gives us in Jesus. And we want to keep building people up in that and so we continually teach them God's word. We encourage them to go to the Lord's Supper. And we keep on reminding them of, of other things God says to us, other promises that he makes. Because we know life isn't always easy. We, we face our times of testing, or there's other struggles along the way sometimes. Some days just things seem to go wrong, and we just struggle to be happy. And we... We want to be able to go back in our minds and remember God's promises. I have loved you with an everlasting love. That nothing in all creation can separate you from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. That he is with us always. That he does give us strength to make it through all things. That in all things he has a plan to give us the blessings that he knows are just right for us. Always building people up in their faith, so they cling all the more firmly to those promises. And then, even more instruction, reminding people 
These are things the Lord does not want you to do. These are things that will dishonor him. These are things that will bring harm and trouble to your faith. These are things that would bring God's anger and punishment upon you. These are the things God wants you to do. These are the things that God wants you to do to bring honor to him, things that will truly bring blessings to others. And he talks about one of those things in these words before us today, one of these things that truly brings blessings to others. He says, May the Lord make your love increase and overflow for each other and for everyone else, just as ours does for you. Uh, Paul's wish here for God's people is that they would grow in love and show that love more and more to everyone. And isn't that, you remember Jesus uh, giving us that same command on Monday, Thursday, talking to his disciples, love each other as I have loved you. Or again he says, uh, as I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this all men will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. We think again what life is all about, the purpose of life, what the goal is for life, right? Those three things, A, to have saving faith, to take care of that faith, and to live that faith. That's what life is all about. And part of living that faith is again showing the love that Jesus commands us to show, the love that he has shown to us. In him we have the example and the motivation. And so, our, our wish for the family of Christ, help us, Lord, to understand and show this love more and more. To remember what it is, and we've spoken of this before, right? That the Bible love, the love God wants us to show others, is not based in selfishness. It's not like, oh, I love chocolate because chocolate pleases me. No, it's love that's focused on others. It's that unselfish unconditional care and concern for others that leads us to give of ourselves, to make sacrifices if necessary, to suffer if necessary, if that's what it takes to do what's truly best for others. Hmm? And I need God's help to show that love because I don't show it by nature. Because by nature, the sinful nature is in control. Love is other-directed. The sinful nature is completely self-directed. It's all about me, me. Uh, there's times when I have to work hard to fight against feelings and thoughts, desires that I might have in order to do what's truly best for others. So I say, Lord, give me your help to do that. Help me to go back to your word again so that I see your example of what love is like. And as I see your example of all you've done for me, that then gives me that motivation to want to give of myself to make sacrifices, to suffer if necessary, just as you did for me, to do what's best for me. Help me to do that so that I can do that for others as well. And we've spoken of this before too, but Jesus says you are the salt of the, of the earth. And salt, well, among other things, it makes things just a little bit better, right? Well, you make the world just a little bit better when you show the love of Jesus, when you treat people the way that God wants you to. And again, Lord, help me. Help me to fight against sinful feelings that I might have. Help me, if necessary, to rise above them, to kill them off so that I can do what's best for others. And then the question comes, well, how do I know what's truly best for others? Well, the Bible tells me, right? I learn in the Bible what God says is best for others. So again, to show love for others, I need to be following what God says in his word. And the more I do that, the better I will truly be able to be a blessing to others. And as I'm focusing on God's word, what God wants, how I can truly love others and be a blessing to them, when that's the focus in my life, I'm less likely to start focusing on sinful things. Again, as I center my life on those things, my Lord, his word, uh, what he wants me to be doing, how he wants me to be loving others, it's less likely that I would 
stray away into various kinds of sin that would harm my relationship with God. And Paul, well, he doesn't want people to stray away. He wants them to stay faithful. And that's another wish that he has for the family of believers. He says, may he strengthen your hearts so that you will be blameless and holy in the presence of our God and Father when our Lord Jesus comes with all his holy ones. We are sinful people right? And we've done things that are wrong. And because of that, people might be a little uncomfortable at the thought of standing before God one day. Um, that probably happened to all of us when we were little. Maybe, uh, well, they used the example, you got caught with your fingers in the cookie jar and you looked up and there was mom and you were caught red-handed and, oh, now what? Or uh, you did something wrong and you got caught and standing before mom and dad, oh, what's going to happen to me now? Well, imagine standing before the Almighty God who knows all our deepest, darkest secrets, all the times when we've failed, all the things we've done, and what is he going to do to me now? Well, again, we find comfort in knowing sins are forgiven. Through Jesus, you're righteous in God's sight, right? And we remember, God is just. And as a just God, he condemns only those who are guilty. He punishes only those who are guilty. He will send to hell only those who are guilty. And the truth is, you're not guilty. Hmm? That's what happened. When Jesus died on the cross and took away your sins, God made that declaration upon you. You are not guilty. And he considers you righteous in his sight. You are holy and blameless because of what Jesus has done. And it's Paul's wish for the family of believers that we always be holy and blameless in God's sight. And that happens then through Jesus, through faith in Jesus. So in the end, Lord... Help us to make sure that we always have our trust in Jesus as our Savior so that we are always holy and blameless in your sight so we have no need to fear your anger or your punishment. But we can always have that certainty, that confidence. God loves me. He's not angry at me. He's with me. He's always going to help me regardless of what I face or, going, or I'm going through. He's loving me and he's going to bless me. And we think, wishing the best for our family in Christ. Help all of us, Lord. Help all of us to always keep our faith in Jesus, especially those we care about the most. You know, my, my brothers, sisters, my children, grandchildren, friends. Make sure, Lord, that we are always trusting in Jesus so we will always be holy and blameless in God's sight. <clears throat> and even then, just thinking about Christmas. Uh, some of you might even already be thinking, uh, we got a really busy month coming up. All these things that we have to do. And on one hand, there's nothing wrong with enjoying the, the blessings that God allows us to enjoy during the Christmas season. Uh, being with friends, doing things, shopping, putting things together. Um, they're blessings. Thank you, Lord, for allowing us to have them and to be able to enjoy them. But help us so that we don't get so caught up in all those other things that we forget what it's really all about. Right? God loved me so much. He sent his son, Jesus. He took away my sins so I can be God's child and be in heaven one day. That's what it's all about. And wishing the best for our family in Christ, for all of us. Help all of us, Lord to keep our priorities in order and to remember what's truly most important in our lives. You think again to the, to the beginning, that, that sentiment, wishing the best for you and your loved ones, you and your family during this Christmas season. And Lord, if it's your will, grant that to us. Give us the best blessings of all. Help us to always be growing in our faith 
Help us, Lord, to increase in showing love, to be able to love others better and better, more and more, as you have loved us. Help us to stay faithful to Jesus always, all of us, so that we can enjoy always the greatest blessings of all, the blessings of salvation. Amen. You may remain seated. You may remain seated. And the peace of God which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. We'll continue with the offering, and as we gather the offering, we'll sing the, the hymn verses. Please rise. If you're following along in the hymnal, the order of worship continues on page 50. Page 50. In the morning, O Lord, I call to you. Be merciful to me and hear my prayer. Lord, have mercy. Rise, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. We pray, come, dear Savior, we long for your appearing. Come to cheer us with your promises as you once cheered your ancient people throughout their long night of waiting and watching. Come to restore our hope. Rouse us from the slumber of despair. Lift our hearts from earthbound goals and direct our eyes above from where you will soon come to make all things right again. Come and work in us a godly grief and a genuine sorrow over our sin. Forgive us for the shameful way we have dishonored you and the shabby way we have dealt with one another, not always showing that kind of love you would have us show. Through your mighty word, stir up in us a ceaseless yearning to give ourselves to others, to love others as you have loved us and given yourself for us. 
Come also to rekindle our joy as we prepare to celebrate your first coming. Do not permit a frenzied busyness to rob us of your peace or to deprive us of times to ponder and wonder at your word and all that you have done for our salvation. Fill us with the quiet delight of finding you in the manger and keep hearts and minds undisturbed by the great throng of people that stream by uncaring. We pray for any who might be enduring great sorrow, for those undergoing spiritual trial, for those whose restless hearts have no knowledge of your coming. Comfort, strengthen, and illumine them with the sweet peace born of your love, and keep them in the way of peace by your holy word. We all pray for the family of Marion Flitter, whose brother Jim Winterberg passed away. You have taken him to yourself. We pray that you would be with the family, that you would comfort them in their sorrow with your sure promises of the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting for all who believe and trust in you as their Lord and Savior. Come quickly, dear Lord Jesus, and fill our longing eyes with the light of your coming. We wait, we keep watch, and in you, our Lord, we put our hope. And it is in your name that we also join together in praying. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, you have brought us safely to this new day. Defend us with your mighty power, and grant that this day we neither fall into sin nor run into any kind of danger. And in all we do, direct us to what is right in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Let us praise the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. We'll remain standing as we sing the closing verses of the hymn. Good morning once again. Thank you for being with us today. We're glad you're here. Special welcome to those who are visitors with us today. We pray God's word you heard would be a blessing for your life. 
Please sign our guest book and we'll give you a visitor packet if you'd like more information about our church. Our thanks to Pastor Mark for being with us today and well, both Thanksgiving and today assisting with our liturgy. We appreciate that. We'll highlight a couple of things, then we have a Wells Connection tape this morning. Uh, first of all, again, no classes today because of the holiday season. Next week everything resumes. Uh, tomorrow night we'll join and set up the rest of the Christmas decorations. That'll be at 6 o'clock. Hopefully you can join us. Uh, the more we have, the faster we can get it done. Tuesday, Evangelism Fellowship at 7.15, and then regular classes on Wednesday. And again, the new Women's Bible class has started. That's uh, Wednesday at 8. They meet in the fireside room. Uh, all the ladies are welcome to join us for that. Maybe we'll just a reminder about you can sign up for poinsettias. There's a sign-up sheet for that. Also on the bulletin table, there's a sign-up sheet to help with the uh, basketball tournament we're going to be hosting uh, next weekend. Uh, we could use a lot of people. Again, if you have questions, you can talk to Mr. Aaron Jenstead. Also, there's a sign-up sheet for uh, Christmas for kids, and we've got two things there. For our kids, you can just sign up on the sheet, and then we'll know you're coming. We do have some other... Uh, sheets that are that are a little bit bigger you can take those if you want to give them to people that you know and also for those with children there's uh, an extra insert about Christmas for kids in the mailboxes Christmas by candlelight two weeks from today that'll be at four o'clock and please note the Sunday school rehearsals and we'll just make the plea um, the more you work with your kids at home uh, the better things go at rehearsals most of these are familiar passages they learn some of them every year, so hopefully it's, it's not uh, too difficult. But, uh, well, the other thing is these are things we'd like them to know and have ingrained in their minds for the rest of their lives. So the more you work with them at home, uh, the better things go at rehearsal and the better things will go Christmas Eve. So thank you, everyone, and we'll continue with the Wells Connection. Hello, I'm Wells President Mark Schrader. As you know, the Synod held its biennial convention last July. There we heard reports from all areas of the Synod's work. We chose people who would serve us and represent us in various offices. And together we adopted a ministry plan that will use the gifts that God makes available to continue sharing the gospel in mission fields and preparing workers to go into those fields with the gospel of Jesus. More than a decade ago, a number of decisions were made that are still having an effect on our work today. There were extensive facilities needs at our synodical schools that needed to be addressed. In addition to that, opportunities for expanded mission work were compelling. As a result, the Synod took on debts in various ways and for various reasons. In 2009, that debt totaled $22.4 million. The decision was made then to eliminate that debt, and we've been faithfully paying it off ever since. We've already eliminated about $18 million of the debt, and the annual debt payment of $1.6 million will retire the debt completely by 2018. But setting aside that kind of money for debt repayment means that it can't be used for carrying out ministry. For that reason, the Synod Convention in 2013 resolved that we would undertake a synod-wide effort to retire the debt early, freeing those funds for the support of missions and ministerial education, and helping congregations to carry out their mission locally. This effort begins this fall, and the goal of the effort is to eliminate the remaining debt of $4.7 million by the middle of next year. This special offering is called One in Christ, Moving Forward in Ministry. Today, I'm encouraging every congregation and every member to express our unity of faith and mission by being a part of this special offering. And God has certainly blessed the work we've been doing together as a synod. For example, your offerings support world mission work in 23 fields, serving more than 128,000 souls. People like Edili Picardo, who as a young girl happened upon a Wells mission in the Caribbean came to faith, and eventually became a Wells teacher. 
I think missionary missionaries are so important, you know, everywhere, everywhere. You just never know the way that you are going to impact people's lives, like my life was. Your offerings also support home missions, more than 160 home mission ministries across North America, and to open new home missions to proclaim the gospel in new areas. Just one example of a new mission congregation made possible by your offerings is in Gilbert, Arizona. And it's comforting to know that I'm not doing it by myself. Uh, but I have all these people encouraging me. I have all these people that are working uh, just as hard or more hard than I am. So it's, it's pretty great. A significant portion of your gifts support the training of future pastors, teachers, and staff ministers. More than 1,500 students enrolled in our ministerial education system this year. MLC graduates like Stephanie Punky serve congregations like yours. It's just the greatest feeling when I see those kids and you know they're drawing away at their pictures and they start singing Jesus loves me and it's just such a wonderful feeling to realize that I am touching them that God is working through me to help those children. The special offering is called One in Christ because we're all in this together blessed in our unity of faith and mission and in our Christian love for one another. To reach our goal, we would like to give every congregation and each individual the opportunity to participate in this effort. And don't just participate. Please pray, asking God that he will bless us through the power of his saving gospel message. By God's grace, we will be one in Christ, moving forward in ministry. Thank you, and may God continue to bless you with the joyful message of a Savior who lived, died, and rose again to set you free. Thank you, and uh, we get into the new year, and we're going to get more information about that special offering, and we'll be looking at it further then. So something to think about. But thank you for being here, especially a holiday weekend. Uh, thank you for being with us today. Uh, good morning. God bless you.